It's Sunday, September 13th, 2020, and welcome back to The Mick Spencer Group, America's most procrastinating podcast. Ed Dutton is on hand for our long-awaited return. Main topic, Les Predateurs. This week, the internet was set aflame with outrage over Netflix's latest release, an award-winning French drama about young girls simply entitled Cuties. Mignon. It struck a nerve and was the latest example of the yawning gulf between people who watch movies and the obnoxious poseur who write about them. Is this film little more than child pornography en masquerade? Is it encouraging or normalizing the sexualization of young girls? Or are we overreacting to what is simply a French art house outrage? By using so many French words, am I, in fact, making it worse? Ed and I discuss the reaction to the film and how we can better understand pedophilia and its place in contemporary culture. Okay. Ed, welcome back. It's been a little while. How are you? I'm, I'm okay, yes. I've just been uh, swimming with the family to this spa where there was a wave machine, which mm. was very pleasant. Uh, and, and because of, I guess, because of fears over corona or whatever, there was hardly anybody there. So there was no competition for the sponge floats and whatever. <laughs> So it, uh, it went very well. That sounds very wholesome. Uh, we mm-hmm. are going to talk about something uh, that is entirely anti-wholesome uh, today. Um, we'll talk about the, uh, the this outrage over the Cuties film on Netflix. And then I, I think we'll be able to expand off into a lot of subjects that are you know, a bit discomforting and uh, tricky to say the least, maybe a little disgusting, but um, I think they should be talked about and they need to be talked about in an adult forum like this. Um, So let's start with cuties because it's always good to start with something that is immediately accessible to everyone. I presume that everyone who is watching this or listening to this has um, heard about the outrage, at least over cuties. Um, I have not seen the film. I canceled Netflix. <laughs> I, it, it, I mean, I, I kind of get the idea of consumer boycotts are pointless. And um, this is just one more thing. Uh, why am I canceling Netflix over this and not that? But uh, nevertheless, this was uh, a bit too egregious. Um, but, uh, this has been addressed by Congress. Uh, there is, there are motions at least to, um, investigate this in some fashion. I don't know what that will eventuate in. Uh, this has been denounced by major figures, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, um, one of my favorite politicians. She came out pretty hard, uh, on this subject. It's been denounced by a lot of liberals. Uh, as well, but it certainly evoked uh, a great deal of conservative outrage and tons of you know alt right, dissident right uh, outrage and so on. I have not seen the film. I feel a little bit bad talking about a film that I haven't seen. <laughs> Seems a bit dishonest, but I really don't want to see it. And of course, I have canceled Netflix. But I've read a few reviews, and uh, I would say that I I do think the film is a little more ambiguous than it's been made out to be. I will grant it that. Um, but nevertheless, the, the phenomenon uh, persist. Uh, so this all started. Um, it wasn't really the film because there are some films that take on difficult subject matter that you can get on Netflix or Amazon or iTunes or what all these streaming services that are often lower budget films that take on uh, difficult subjects. I remember seeing a, um, a trailer for a film called White Girl, which was kind of about coming of sad coming of age of lower class woman who was, you know, doing drugs and having sex uh, at a young age and so on. It, the, the the film, I mean, it was depicting it, representing it, but it was um, s- seemed to have a kind of sad quality to it. I think the problem with Cuties was right away, Netflix was advertising this as a underage strip show. I mean, I don't don't think that's wrong to say. The initial poster uh, was uh, of these girls uh, glammed out. Uh, The poster did not convey any nuance whatsoever. It was basically uh, preteen girls 
um, acting like uh, dancing queens at best, I guess, and strippers at worst, maybe even even worse than that as, as human trafficked uh, prostitutes. Um, and this generated outrage. Netflix apologized. And I think the line that I've seen is that this was a botched poster or something as if they, you know, uh, made a mistake or something. I, I think it was quite deliberate what they were doing. Um, and the, uh, the, the subsequent posters have been a little more tame. Uh, but I mean, this movie is more nuanced from what I've read than that poster would imply as probably most all movies are. Um, and it, it's actually about a Senegalese girl and um, she's, you know, going through the issues of life and having family trauma and so on. Uh, but I also don't think it's wrong that this film is in, in the, you know, the, the, the poster and the, the thumbnail of the film is meant to titillate. And it's meant to get you excited about this. You you don't click on it or walk into the movie theater for the for the nuance. You click on it and go to the movies for the titillation and sensation. And uh, I think that is clearly what was going on. And even if there are more nuances, I, I there's no question that. Well, it's not, I mean, it's a French go ahead. film. It's French. So the, 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 in, in general, my experience of French films is that compared to American films or British films, you know, they're inherently deep. I mean, the, the, the French are yes. people who can make penguins wandering around on the ice mm -hmm. doing penguin stuff, a, a profound emotional experience. Well, and that so is deep. that's, yeah. I, and they the, the, to the, a certain relay. Freeman talking, but the version that I got was the original version where it's French. I mean, it's much more profound if it's narrated in French than if it's narrated by Morgan Freeman. So right. I think there's an e there, there, there could be an element of sort of cultural misunderstanding there, and also perhaps attitudes towards the sexualization of children and things like this are, are rather more uh, liberal um, in, in, in French sort of art house drama. Uh, if you look at other posters that they've done for this film, remember it's a Senegalese girl, Muslim girl, and she's torn between the hypersexualized uh, tween age, I suppose you'd say, or whatever, early teenage yeah. world of her very poor Parisian friends um, and the Islamic world uh, of, of her background. And uh, in the end, she makes a choice to go with neither. Hmm. And um, the uh, sorry if I've spoiled the plot for anybody, uh, but that was uh, and the what they, what they tried to argue was that this was a, a, a critique almost. That this was a presentation of reality. That the reality is that the culture is hypersexualizing these pre these uh, uh, teenage girls. I, I agree with that. Um, yeah. that, that, that they are hypersexualizing themselves and they dress like uh, we have this phrase in Finland, "piku horat," little whores. And mm -hmm. um, they, 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 they dress rather like that. So they're highly sexualized and they've got all these sexual influences. But on the other hand, I agree. And, and there are other posters uh, which they've put up where it's these girls in normal clothes and the sort of Parisian background and whatever. But it seems to me um, not too much of a stretch to think to, to, to oneself that while it is um, presenting that reality and it is a reality, uh, of the sexualized nature of these teenage girls, particularly in working class districts of, of, of Paris right. or whatever, um, uh, and the fact that the Muslims are going to come into contact with them and therefore it's going to put them in an extreme sort of dissonance about how they should behave. You are rather contributing to, to it if you do a poster of girls who, whatever they are, 15, 14 years old, how are they, are they supposed to be? Um, you know, looking sexy really and having the sexy, sexy looks on their faces. Um, you, you are contributing to that. You're contributing to the very culture that you're claiming to attempt to artfully um, present and uh, critique. So right. I, I, I find it hard to believe that they didn't realize that, oh, you know, we've got to get publicity for our film. And good God, this is going to work, isn't it? Think of all the people that are going to watch this film simply because of the furore that has yeah, been Yeah, I mean, this. for the amount of subscribers they've lost, uh, they might very well have gained many. And the other aspect is that there's this, you know, th there there is a kind of, a certain kind of snobbery of uh, upper middle class people that, that are probably subscribed to HBO and things like that and not just Netflix, but that, oh, I can watch this. I can appreciate this, you know, sensation. 
uh, and, and in a way that those you know uh, dumb Christians can't. And yeah, precisely, uh, I, I think they're playing on that. They're almost get, I'm, getting I'm a certain that. cachet. I'm, I'm, I, 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 they see themselves wrongly because we have research on what left-wing people are like and they feel a sense of moral disgust uh, 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 with regard to those that are different from them in, politically uh, a lot more strongly than right-wing people do and they feel this sense of equality very intensely and they have less emotional control uh, uh, than, than uh, conservatives. But they can sort of think to themselves, yeah, I'm, I'm above my instincts. People have right. these base instincts to these these lower class people that vote for Brexit and Trump and Marine Le Pen and whatever. They 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 have these base instincts to just judge this film and judge this poster and be disgusted by it. But I I can see the art in this. I can see the depth right. in this. Um, we've had extreme examples of. I mean, if you if you look at modern art. And a lot of modern art is the ultimate example of the emperor has no clothes kind of thing. Uh, even if you go back 20 years in Britain, you had the Turner Prize, which was the leading art prize. And it was things like Tracy Emin's Unmade Bed. Uh, or, right. or it was it was, it was uh, just some rubbish strewn on the floor. I, I think there's another know. level to it. I, I think it's the I'm above my instincts and through effort for effortful control, I can watch this. But. Uh, I, I think there's a there's another aspect to it, which is that if you look at white liberals in the their lifestyle, uh, they're living in the suburbs. They are in some cases living in urban environments, um, it, but they uh, and and you can certainly find them in, in rural environments as well, but less so. But they are living a kind of wasp existence. And they, you know, I think we sometimes conservatives will, you know, allow social media to, to inflect how they view them. And they think that every white person voting for Biden has blue hair and is yelling at people and screaming or protesting and throwing malls of cocktails. Uh, the true. fact is, what? <laughs> You're like, that's true. <laughs> no. Um, if you actually go to these white liberal communities, they are pretty waspy. And I think there's this almost, uh, there, there's a certain kind of pity that you look down, you know, you, pity allows you to achieve a certain degree of power. You, you are looking down on someone and kind of thinking, well, this isn't happening to my daughter. And uh, this is kind of a problem among the lower classes. I, I was reminded of um, something that was uh, a kind of phenomenon from uh, about 10 years ago or so. It, and it was uh, it coincided when I was at Duke University. So I guess it's about 15 years ago now. Um, but there was this uh, book that was out on hookup culture. And it, it they actually went to Duke University as, you know, one of these you know, kind of high flying places where you'll get a job in finance afterward. And they were talking to girls about hookup culture. And what the book revealed was that there was almost the, this cold, almost sociopathic uh, response to what's the matter at? No, no, I'm just looking in more detail that that um, that picture. OK, uh, the cause all the controversy. Okay. And if you, um, I mean, good anyway, sorry, carry on. Okay. Uh, so there was this book on hookup culture, and what it depicted was this cold, almost sociopathic relation to sex, where these girls would, you know, uh, go give a blowjob, get a little something for themselves, and then kick the guy out of their dorm room uh, at, you know, midnight and maybe never see him again. It was almost this kind of like, consumerist aspect to sex or it was fun. There was actually another controversy about a year later, which was the this girl, the sorority was did a PowerPoint presentation on her fuck list and was just kind of go coldly documenting what she's done and how she's risen in status and so on. It, it was pretty shocking just in the level of sociopathy, you could say. Uh, but what this book um, actually was kind of concluded was that you would have these upper middle class white liberals who would go to Duke that could act like this and in a way get away with it and maybe end up married and what have you or end up with a career. Uh, but these same trends occurring among lower classes ended up in uh, broken families, lots of unplanned pregnancy, abortion, 
uh, drug use, and so on. Well, I and guess it's the, difference between, it's the difference between operating that strategy and not being particularly intelligent and not having access to resources. Exactly. Um, operating but, that strategy out of and operating that strategy because you plan to operate it because you're coldly psychopathic and highly intelligent and you realize you can make money out of it and you can sort of drop it whenever you want to and you yes. have access to the resources and the contacts to not be to not have to do so. And so there's something there's something rather different about a person who um, you know has an illegitimate child because they they're liberal and they think that marriage is an increasingly irrelevant social construct and they don't think they need to get married and uh, blah 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 and they live in I don't know in some nice part of North London and the, they have a illegitimate child and whatever that's fine but if a, if a person does it uh, accidentally because out of a drunken drug fueled you know gang bang right. you know so then, then 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 that's the same thing but it's a, not a, it's less of a problem uh, it's more of a yes, problem and white liberals aren't doing what you describe i mean in in the sense of family formation and so on this is the coming apart thesis of charles murray where all of these obnoxious uh upper bourgeois uh whites actually are forming families and sending their kill children to private schools and so on and it's actually lo the lower classes that are are kind of losing uh, this, you know, supposed conservatism, which they might actually admire more than the upper classes. There, there are just a lot of ironies uh, going on. But well, I yeah, think it's there's always the, it's always the irony with the woke, the woking, the woking classes, as I call them, the woking classes, as opposed to the working classes. That they, right. are, um, it's like Christians as well in the early church. They, 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 they signal humility as a means of further entrenching their wealth. And right. further, in, further entrenching their their social status, and further in, entrenching their lack of humility, really, by signalling their humility or signalling their uh, you know their woke their adherence to this woke culture. And so now you do it by signalling your rather than in the old days you'd signal your religiousness, your traditional values in Victorian England or whatever. Now, of course, you signal your abhorrence of that. You signal the degree to which you are the opposite of that. The degree to right. which you know I don't need to get married. I'm perfectly happy to have an illegitimate child, uh, illegitimate children, or whatever. I'm um, perfectly happy to swear. I'm perfectly happy to do. I, I'm perfectly happy to with immigration. I'm perfectly happy with sexuality. Um, if I get pregnant and the child has Down syndrome, I'll keep it as a way of mm -hmm. signalling my morality and my, you know, how how kind of mm -hmm. in touch I am. And so, and it's only these working class people that would get pregnant with a Down syndrome child and abort it. Um, so it's a side of my wealth that I would keep it. And um, and and then you you just get this uh, signaling in the opposite direction. I'm I'm signaling my humility in in all of these ways. Uh, but in reality, of course, it helps me to cement my status. And so you have this irony that it's those very people that will send their kids to private schools, or if it is to state schools, it will or what you call in America public schools. It will be to public schools in the nicest possible area. You know, the nicest yes. possible catch area so they can then signal their virtue by saying oh well no i haven't sent my kid to private school no no oh no no i'm not but 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 look look i public school but of course it's a public school in some wonderful area like uh where exactly. where, where there's not a huge difference between public and private but but also it, it this seems to come to a degree from a meritocratic society an individualist society where in other and i don't think i'm being entirely nostalgic in saying this in other times the upper classes felt like they are a guardian class of the lower orders and they would have a realistic assessment of the lower orders, but they would seek to take care of them. In America, where you can be whatever you want to be, and it's supposedly meritocratic and individualist, and it's all about accumulating wealth or so on, then it's just kind of like, well, uh, screw them. They aren't clever enough to be to achieve my type of lifestyle. And you can, again, have pity for them in the sense that you are looking down on them. Uh, but you, didn't you have that paternalism in the South to some extent? Uh, yeah. I mean, are you talking about like the old South? Or, yeah, the or antebellum South. Didn't you have that kind of paternalistic attitude. Towards of course. I mean, the, the dominant, you know, as, as uh, the Roll, Jordan Roll book shows, the Genovese book, the, the dominant emotion between slave owner and slave was love. In fact, it was a, a paternalistic 
uh, love that they are they they aren't doing this just as an economic system that this is actually a moral system. Some even Yankees picked up on that. Yeah, I mean um, in, in England they were certainly at the public schools. They were very at the, what we call public schools, these prestigious boarding schools and the prep right. schools. They were heavily inculcated with this noblesse oblige kind of Spartan lifestyle. In fact, they were de they were deliberately <laughs> and willfully modelled on the teachings of Plato. And and Plato mm. argued that the, the aristocracy should never know their parents, kind of thing. Uh, that the, mm. the the bond with the parents should be broken, such that the the, the, no, the nobles are there to um, to look after society and to act in the best interests of society and to fight for society and to, to look after the lower orders. And that's 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 the quid pro quo they pay for their privilege. And therefore, as part of their privilege, they must be inculcated with these group selected values through a sort of system of of. Uh, of, of kindly meant structured violence, basically, uh, and that was that was kind of what the, the the system did. And those were the kinds of people until really quite recently. I mean, as recently as the late uh, early eighties, the foreign secretary in England, so the second or third most powerful man in in England, was a hereditary peer. He'd never been a member of Parliament. He was a hereditary peer, Lord Carrington, and you had various other people, William White Law, who was Mrs. Thatcher's Home Secretary, uh, and lots and lots of others that were gentry that were part of this upper class tradition. And it's only with New Labour that that really falls apart. And you just get, as you say, these upper middle class people that haven't been to public school. They've been to, a lot of them to private, to stay private schools or to state schools. And they, as far as they're concerned, they have much more kind of Mrs. Thatcher's kind of attitude, I suppose, really, without the gentry to hold her back, which is that you should work hard and get to the top. And everyone can do that. If you don't do it, you're lazy. And so you kind of, you, 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 which is insane because the, the genetics of, of these traits, such as intelligence and personality that predict getting to the top are very high. Right, and so 0.8 for intelligence, 0.5 or more for personality. So you can see how this uh, would uh, would happen, um, uh, and then you would, of course, as Charles Murray argues in uh, the Bell Curve, uh, you you get this increasing social stratification because of meritocracy, whereby people increasingly just don't know or have anything to do with people of lower social classes, let alone regard them as people they should look after or care about. Right, um, and so and so you get this. Um, increasing polarization though i do well, I'm think just looking mention that many people in our movement will say things like well race uh when we deconstructed race that began the downfall of western civilization and so on uh i mean and and that if we can just be, get real about race that this will be the upfall of uh western civilization i would um interject that it was class deconstruction that started it all and i don't think that we can save europe writ large uh without a kind of class reconstruction and i don't mean that in the sense of you know oh wealth inequality is great and we should have these billionaires um but there th there needs to be a paternalistic guardian class in any type of society that can deal with these things realistically and these meritocratic sociopathic elites are just as much of a problem i think i think a lot more of the problem uh than say you know illegal immigrants or something um and that's so what just john to glove add that in, in there <laughs> so john glove argued in his book on the decline of civilizations he noticed that always during the early winter of civilization as the civilization starts to be noticeably in decline and becomes polarized and whatever you always get the same process you always get the because of the collapse of religiousness and the collapse of patriarchy you always get the rise of women you always get immigration because people don't have believe in a god anymore that sees them as special and so they let foreigners in and also right. you always get everything being about money um, yes. and nothing higher than money because uh, because for these kinds of whores that you were talking about that recount the number of blowjobs they give or whatever mm -hmm. there's, there, 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 there is nothing for them higher than money they have no dignity they have no self-respect they have no higher values they have no transcendental values that say that certain things are just appalling and beyond the pale for, for like eternal eternal right. bad they, they do have self-respect i would say that they yeah. actually respect themselves quite a bit Oh, yeah, they, not, in a narcissistic they're brilliant, way. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. they deeply <laughs> love themselves in a kind of yes. narcissistic way. They do. Yeah. That, is true. that is true. But they, but they, but they have no eternal sort of values, and consequently, they, everything's about money, and therefore they can do things that disgust them. And the other thing that you that you find in the uh, in this glove argues in this fall of civilization in this winter stage is that all the old values are questioned. 
all the old values are questioned. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so not, not just aristocracy is questioned, which undermines the paternalistic class. Everything becomes middle class. Everything becomes about money. Religion is questioned. So there's no eternal values, no, patri no, no, no patriarchal values, no uh, sense of ethnocentrism, nothing to fight for, a, a feeling that everything's just kind of run out. Um, but I, I also, and then we go, we've gone further than this. You start questioning every sort of structure, every sort of difference. And it creates a kind of a, an arms race of questioning in order to be more questioning and thus supposedly more intelligent and intellectual than the next man. There's middle class right. questioning of things, questioning of gender roles, questioning now of sexuality and sexual orientation, questioning of, of the nature of male and female. Um, and, and, this, and this push towards equality that you get in that stage of civilization. So it's been built up because the civilization is about hierarchy. It's group selected. It's a, a, a binding values of, of, of hierarchy and in-group loyalty. These are binding values where you sacrifice the good of the individual for the hierarchical structure that is necessary to have an ordered society that can compete with other societies and that can produce things and whatever. Um, and uh, you have this in-group loyalty and that you therefore you make sacrifices sacrifices for the society. What you see at the, at the decadent stage when everyone's really, really rich and whatever is the decline, uh, because the, these values are upheld by religiousness, once the religion de declines, you get these individualistic values of everything is about harm avoidance and no harm and they don't hurt me right. and, you know, um, and, and about equality and questioning everything in the direction of equality. And that's what we see here, that this highlights, you question everything, you question sexuality, you question gender, eventually you get, everyone's equal, people that are gay and straight are equal, people of the different races are equal, men and women are equal, and eventually, well, what about children and grown-ups? Right. And the, mo the most fundamental evolutionary thing, which is that parents are there to raise their children and raise them, frankly, in a group-selected, adaptive way, because that's a traditional way that children are raised, in part of a religion, part of, to, to, for the good of the group. Um, becomes, no, childhood should be about having a nice time and lots of lovely life experiences, which leaves you unprepared for competing in a society where, where you, you know, these group values help you to compete. Um, right. uh, and even worse, that oh well, that I, I'm I don't want to judge my child. I don't want to tell my child what to do. I don't. I, I, my child's an individual, and I'm an individual. And you know, and, and so you have this abnegation of responsibility to look after the child. It's almost like the child and the adult, the child and the parent are no different. They're equal. They're equal. Right. And then. You, if the child wants, will imitate the, the, the adult to the extent of this sexualized poster where you have this black girl on her hands and knees, like a, almost a like doggy style asking for asking to be penetrated, which is a yeah. poster. Um, then, yeah, and, and that is part of this, this questioning of everything. This is negative social epistasis in action. Um, and, and, and the case of that boy who, who, whose mother in, in America, whose mother allowed him to dance on stage at gay nightclubs and gay men yeah. were saying on, uh, well, give, giving him money and then pedophiles online were saying they'd like to have sex with him um, because she had abnegated all responsibility for his interests and just let him do whatever he liked and indeed encouraged him. To do, to, to do these these unusual peculiar things, whereas a, as a responsible mother would say, okay, the son's going through a bit of a weird phase. Let's let's direct him in the right, right. direction. But no, none of that. Um, and then eventually you get a point where once all of this is questioned, paedophilia starts to become something. That, well, look, I, 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 if everyone is in favour of these excluded groups, it's Pride Week, Gay Pride. But what about these poor old paedophiles? Yeah, isn't let's, it, isn't let's, it just a sexual orientation? Yeah, let, let's go there. Uh, so uh, first off, let me mention this. I, I don't think the fact that uh, the the cuties protagonist is Senegalese is um, just a, 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 you know, a dispensable aspect of, of this thing. I, I, I do think that a lot of this functions on... Uh, upper class white liberals looking down on immigrants and kind of not caring about them. Just, I should mention that. But uh, let's uh, not so much with the um, you know tween uh, tranny boy who was who was white and had antifa parents apparently. Uh, but let's let's go there in terms of this notion that the car has no brakes. And um, I can you know I I was born in 1978. I can remember the gay rights movements uh, of the 80s and 90s. I can remember that within the context of the AIDS uh, uh, epidemic. 
Uh, and I can remember, you know, homosexuals kind of gradually finding their way into culture. They were, they were viewed, and I think they did this, um, you know, to a large degree, but kind of in a way neutralizing themselves and having presenting themselves not as a major threat. There was a, there, there were kind of, in, you know, there was the AIDS crisis, which is, you know, kind of terrifying in some ways. Um, then there was the, you know, activist homosexual kind of from the seventies of, you know, we demand our rights. We're going to go out in the streets. We're going to maybe even have a, a bit of a, a gay riot, so to speak. Uh, and then there was kind of the move in the nineties and two thousands of the kind of fun, amusing, cute gay who is humorous and is your hairdresser and friends with your girlfriend or, or what have you. That was actually much more successful in terms of, um, neutralizing homosexuals and making people accept them. Uh, gay marriage, I, I think was a, a kind of, I think the Andrew Sullivan type tactic of saying we're almost normal and we're just like you bourgeois people who want to get married and have a mortgage was also a very successful strategy uh, for gays being uh, accepted. But I, I can remember in about 2013, uh, when gay marriage had effectively been accepted across the board, oh, Barack Obama, who opposed gay marriage in 2008, uh, endorsed it and, and kind of you know signaled about that. Most states had it. Um, uh, I think Tim Cook, who was the CEO of Apple Computer, which is a multi multi billion dollar company, came out, uh, and it was just almost a you know we've won moment where this is so mainstream now you can't even really. You know, it's not even a thing. It's not even a controversy at this point. And many, you could see, you know, National Review, the conservative case for gay marriage and all this kind of stuff. And I remember thinking at the time, well, okay, I guess this is now over and we can move on to more serious things. But of course, I was wrong. It's never over. And within a year, uh, who popped up on the radar screen but Caitlyn Jenner? And the we went to transsexuals. And within a couple of years after Caitlyn Jenner, which you could say is an oddity and you know idiosyncratic novelty, uh, we went to trans children, and that was promoted in the mainstream. Uh, by uh, 2018 or 2019, um, there was a um, presidential, uh, Democratic presidential, gay, lesbian, queer. Uh, forum on CNN, in which most of the candidates were effectively endorsing uh, conversion therapy for children. There was actually a uh, notorious and, and really shocking scene in which, you know, Elizabeth Warren, this just, you know, tedious, uh, you know, daughter of Puritans going in the way that she does, talking with his other just tedious uh, you know, overweight woman who is, they're bragging about her child being, you know, a, a, a transsexual and, and they're going through therapy. Of a, of a child going through, a child going through a phase, as all children do, phases of various Of course times, they do, yeah. And, and the parents should direct the children um, in a, an adaptive direction rather than just listen to them. I mean, if I listen to right. my son and just let him do what he wants, he'd be on the computer all day, every day. Right. Um, and, and, uh, and also and, they're and, going and, and, through puberty. They don't understand what sex is. They're, they're going to kind of be weird. And, yeah. you know, you just have to way, accept Desmond, that Desmond, and kind of Desmond accept Nicole it, you know, before. but then also direct them in a, in a positive direction, but, but also understand that, you know, look, being a kid, you, yeah, you're, you're learning all, you don't understand things you're learning, your hormones are changing. I mean, it's, it's, it's a difficult time. But to, you know, a kid who's a boy who says, oh, I want to dress up as a girl. Uh, and then you say, oh, good, let's castrate him immediately and and change him to a girl. Um, yeah, I can rem I had an older sister who was five years older than I and her friends would always dress me up like a girl whenever they would come over. Uh, but there was no. <laughs> <laughs> which was, I look back as like a form of amusing hazing or something on the, on behalf of my older sister. But it is not important. And the the notion that that said something significant about my inner identity is absurd. 
And so yeah, you I just dress, I used to dress my dog I used to dress my dog up in human clothes, but there's no sense, no question of him becoming a trans species. Um, <laughs> but the, the, well. thing, the thing the thing that's in, interesting about it is that in the 70s, when there was this general free for all, particularly in the UK. Okay, you had the paedophile information network, it was called, which was this paedophile advocacy group. Wow. And it was advocating for paedophilia. It was advocating for the age of sexual consent to be reduced to three or something. Um, and oh, it, and, it, and it attached itself to uh, the civil liberties, this pro civil liberties group that were pro gays. Um, and it was kind of, to some extent, accepted among this group. And then eventually there was a public backlash against it. Like we, we've gone too far that those that right. want to, the spiteful mutant types that want to destroy society and completely undermine everything and just embrace the void and embrace chaos. We've gone too far. Let's rein it back. So paedophilia was reined back. Um, and there was this kind of transference that as homosexuality was increasingly promoted as acceptable and OK, paedophilia was increasingly the thing that, no, that, that's out. That's that's awful. And you I had mean, we're Britain seeing that now. Moral yeah, because you, you see even liberals talking about this is cuties is promoting sex, sex trafficking. I mean, I, I think they know it's gone, it's, gone, it's gone too far too soon. And it undermines and, what they're and, doing. And, but where we is so far. Yeah, yeah, this is like far, this is like a hundred steps forward, one step back. I mean, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If you look at places like Iran or whatever, the Shah, he liberalizes society, he makes it all Western, he went too far, too soon, and the consequence of that was a huge backlash and the establishment of the Islamic State, Islamic Republic right. of Iran. Um, and so you you can't go. That's what they've got to be careful about. If you go too far, you get a backlash, and that's a problem for these people. They, the the idea is to to um, to slowly uh, get you used to it. So get you get you used to yeah, gays is fine. Get you used to transsexuality. Get, uh, you don't go too far. And so these people are now now here we go. Forty years after Pi, now in Britain we have these people that call themselves Maps, minor attracted persons. <laughs> and they've got their own flag, like a gay pride flag, and they've got and they've got their own. You know, they're slowly sort of putting it out there. They're, and there's a, there's a psychologist called Stephen Harper at Nottingham Trent University who's he told a newspaper. Um, I think that the map community is essential. We know that people are minor, who are minor attracted, face a lot of stigma in society. We know that a lot of yeah. them don't commit any offences at all. So actually, having the community where they can support each other and their mental health gives them a sense of identity. And Harper added, as a heterosexual male, it doesn't mean because I see a female in the street, I'm automatically going to commit an offence. It's a common misconception that minor attracted people have no self-control. They have the same level of self-control as anyone else. Well, um, OK. And I, this is one of those things where I I, I agree. Like, I mean, I, I think this needs to be snuffed out. Like, you, you can't open up that door. Uh, however, I, I, I mean, I would say this just to be entirely objective uh, about this matter. I do think that I, I don't, I don't think that a a pedophile is. I don't know what to say. You know, he, he's he's indulging in sin, or he's been he's been changed by society. I, I would imagine that a pedophile does have a serious mental disorder that, sh and maybe even oh, yeah. a genetically it's, defined uh... one, and he should be treated clinically uh but i i agree there there's this problem with with objectivity where you know again a um objectivity does not mean endorsement or or acceptance so i i think we can talk about these very discomforting matters oh, yeah yeah I, I had this you know, that, you know, that, uh, that paper i, I did know on what they're art. doing when slate magazine writes some article on you know how pedophiles it's not their fault or whatever i know what they're doing but no, at I the mean, same time, at I, some level, it isn't their fault. I, I think they are um, No, it's not their incurable. fault. They, it, sexual orientation um, develops to, to uh, maladaptively. It has to go through a series of phases to become uh, heterosexuality. This is a consequence of genes. This is a consequence of things happening in utero. Um, right. The problems with the mother and her hormones and whatever. Um, uh, and so uh, that's uh, that's certainly true. That that, that that's uh, uh, pedophilia uh, correlates with all kinds of other markers of developmental instability, such as uh, 
uh, you know, asymmetrical face, minor physical abnormalities, uh, all, all kinds of things like that. So it's a, it's a consequence. There's nothing adapted about wanting to have sex with children. Uh, right. Hemophilia is a slightly different thing, but there's nothing adaptive about wanting to have sex. It, it correlates. It correlates with. Uh, 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 mood dis mood disorders. Sixty six percent have mood disorders. Twenty five percent have obsessive compulsive disorder and uh, personality disorders of various kinds. Uh, Sixty one percent have borderline personality disorder. So the sense of the self hasn't developed properly. Um, but, so yeah, it's not it's not it's not their fault. But they're, they're basically people that for those for, due, due to those different sets of circumstances are seriously ill, uh, mentally yes. ill, often physically ill as well because it correlates with uh, lots and lots of physical problems. Um, and so to promote it as uh, uh, on a par with uh, homosexuality, particularly when, as I've said, there's some evidence that homosexuality could even be group selected, um, uh, uh, doesn't make much sense to me. I suppose it, uh, it, 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 it could be argued that there could be a group selected dimension to it in so much as these people are attracted to children, and therefore want to work with children and be teachers and things. And as long as they are absolutely forbidden to act on it, well, there's something oh. like that. There. <laughs> but that seems to me improbable when you consider all of the uh, uh, negative uh, genetic uh, costs. So yeah, no. there, there, so there are plenty of non-criminals who want to coach soccer. I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to uh, no. accept so, it on so, that basis. So, I, I, <laughs> yes. So I think I think it's uh, it's 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 a matter of the salami tactics, a matter of preparing society and and it going too far. Like in Britain with the wokeness, they decided to the, uh, the BBC decided not to play um, Royal Britannia. Uh, the last night of the proms, which is this famous patriotic thing, the last night of the proms. And it was realized fairly quickly that they've gone too far. Right. This is causing a backlash. It's causing too much of a backlash. We should be banning the Br British national anthems, you know, 30 years from now, not now. We've gone too far. Right. And so they've gone back on it. And that was, a, that was I think, what happened with um, paedophilia in the 70s. For, for Do you think there's that, there's also they... kind of a, a class dimension? I mean, I, 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 I again, I, I think that I, I think that pedophiles need to be uh, obviously crim that needs to be criminalized, but they 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 need to be treated clinically. And, and I think in that context, a certain degree of understanding uh, could be offered. But um, do you think there's also kind of a, a class dimension to this and the sense of, I mean, when, when you see with the, the, the Epstein affair and so on, where it, it's, it, it's not a, a, a pedophile in the sense of someone who just has this bizarre maladaptive attraction no, to no, children. You've got to who, yeah, you, you, no, that's quite right. You've got to, when we say the, the, the word pedophile is moved used too broadly. So right. there are those that are pedophiles that are just section specifically sexually attracted to children. It's a fetish, a sexual fetish right. due to various things that have gone wrong. Then there are those that just have a very high sex drive and want to have sex and the psychopaths and don't care about who they hurt. And, um, and, and it's almost like there's a little bit of even if they're not they're they're, they're not like a, a a pedophile in this in this biological sense there there's almost this frisson of like like i'll just i'll go there i'll I'll do whatever is uh against s s social norms i i'm just uh, above it all and um you know I, I again so i mean i i I, I think some distinctions could yeah, be, could be right. made. I mean, and I, I think there, with something like cuties, there, 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 we do have an elite in Western societies. The wealth inequality is tremendous. It's much greater than it was fifty or a hundred years ago. Uh, and it, it, there, are people, when you get there, and there are no social norms holding you back. There's almost the sense of I can do anything and I have come to the top. And even if I'm not a, a pedophile in the kind of clinical sense, why not? You know, th this just this just you're demonstrates saying, saying, that, would be, that would be that would be consistent with sort of psychopathic or sort of narcissistic personality. And the idea that right. I'll, I'll just demonstrate to myself my own importance by just doing whatever I like just to see right. if I can get away with it. And I can get away with it and I will. Right. Um, sort of, sort and they of, do. Yeah, I, I suppose that's like, that could be an element of that that it's something thrilling for someone like Epstein or whatever to to know that I can. This is totally unacceptable, and I can do it because I'm above everything. I'm like God. 
Yes, um, and he wanted to be so God. You can actually see in his research interest, um, there was kind of uh, eugenics uh, are, are there, but there, but also kind of living forever and and all sorts of things. So um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it was almost like a um, perversion or deformation of some of the things that we discuss. Uh, but uh, it's interesting, isn't it? That traditionally, traditionally, the only people in the English, the only person in the English language whose personal pronouns differ from he or she is God because it has to be capitalized. Mm. Um, and, and now and now and now there's all these people that are saying, oh my personal pronouns are these. My, I have this different personal pronoun from he, she. And in the past, the only person that had a different personal pro personal pronoun from small h he, small s she was God. Um, and the, the narcissism level among these people is is very high. They have high levels of narcissistic personality disorder, so it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think use the, the, the first the, person plural for for myself. Uh, we use that. No, just do we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was traditionally only the monarch that would use that. Exactly. Yeah. Refer to himself as God. Yes. Um, but I do. I do think that it's it's picked up on something. It's that that that, that poster is that, that has caused the controversy is so starkly about the, the, those those little girls are sexualized. Perhaps there's some people that have reacted to it negatively because of a sort of cognitive dissonance because they're kind of aroused by it and they don't want to be aroused by it and it makes them angry. Um, and um, I'm and, not uh, aroused and, and, by and, it. I see it as real. I've always that. This is why I don't understand pedophilia. I I just I I, I it, it's like I would more likely have sex with a shoe or something than uh, well, it, yes. it just there's it just doesn't make sense i i, I don't you know i i think i've mentioned this on a, a earlier it, it's like if you were out at the um if you were out at the beach and a little and you'll sometimes see this where a uh, a toddler or a little girl they'll they'll take off their swimsuit and kind of you know i'm free basically in their mind uh, cause uh, sometimes they, you know, just, you know, don't like wearing clothes. You kind of look at that and it's like, oh, that's so cute. That's so funny, but there's no eroticism to it. And, and seeing an 11 year old dance in these ways, or even some of these, um, people, and this is actually kind of a lower class phenomenon in the United States of creating the, creating these princess pageants and so on the, the, uh, John Bidet Ramsey kind of thing. I, I, I'm, I'm not just saying this to sound like I'm a prude, but I, I look at that and this is sad or bizarre. Those are the emotions or well, yeah, that's adjectives the, that's I would the use. It, the the erotic the, is not one of them. No, that's the emotions a normal heterosexual should feel about such things. Right. Um, and and, um, and that's, that's the adaptive emotion. They're children and they're there to be brought up by society and looked after and, 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 uh, and, uh, um, uh, uh, carefully and uh, successfully uh, molded into adults, and that's right. that's that's the group selected thing to do. The individualistic thing to do, uh, and it's in extremists is is if you're just a total psycho, is just to see everybody and everything as subject to your whims and right. subject to what you want. And if you happen to want, if you happen to feel horny at a given time, and the easiest thing to access and it is easy to access is a child. Um, then that's mm -hmm. what you'll if you're that's what you'll go for, or if you're just meant, messed up and you'll set you out and you're attracted to, to, to children. But so yeah, and we've um, and that's why if you look at these old films, if you go back to uh, the fifties or forties or whatever, child nudity in films is doesn't mean anything. It's fine. It's commonplace. Right. It's not a problem at all. Adult nudity absolutely a problem. And now right. this has been reversed. Adult nudity is perfectly normal in films. And um, you, you have films where you like. I remember seeing a film. It was a, it was an American remake of one of those Japanese movie. You know those Japanese kind of movies, horror movie type things. And there's a boy that has a bath, and they have Old him have a bath something? wearing his swimming trunks because <laughs> the idea of even the briefest or even implied nudity right. with a boy it would be appalling. But, but but nudity of an adult is perfectly fine. So you've 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 had this uh, extraordinary reversal because of concern about pedophilia 
uh, right. and, and concerned about this tiny minority of people that would get the rocks off over some over over something like that. So so yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a disorder. It's a serious disorder. It's appalling, uh, of course, for the children that are abused, uh, whether they mm -hmm. are sexually abused or whether they're put into photographs or whatever. Right. Psychologically, physically appalling for them. Um, it can lead to the, there's evidence it can cause maladaptation in their own sexuality, and that a lot of paedophiles have themselves been abused. Um, no uh, and and so it, to, to, to normalize in any way the sexuality of children is just something which is a sign of a highly degenerate society. And that's what a society that's in decline, a society that's lost its way, a society that's lost its values, its group values. And that's to have put up a poster like that where you're clearly uh, um, encouraging other children who will see that think that's okay and you're clearly kind of titillating people with the, it's absolutely they've of course withdrawn it over the furore but mm -hmm. um it, it's, it's happened they've done it they've made their little contribution to negative social epistasis well let's leave it at that i i am glad we could have this um serious discussion about an uncomfortable topic uh ed thanks thank you